This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. To run through, the company name is Hexlets. We actually did a, um, and I don't have a working thing. Oh, there we go, sorry. We actually did a bunch of surveys. Some of the uh, feedback that we got was maybe we want to change the name to Pixlets. You'll see why. Again, there we go, I gotta get a little closer here, I think. So what is a hexlet? A hexlet is essentially a bracelet, a metal bracelet that's a hexagonal shape that has interchangeable links on it that are magnetic. Uh, as we developed the concept out, we uh, came to the conclusion that these actual little hexes can put pictures in, photos, any kind of media whatsoever. You cover it with an enamel, and uh, they're interchangeable, obviously, from the magnet. The bracelet itself has laser etching on it, just to make it a little bit more interesting if you don't have hexes on it. It is about seven and a half inches long. It has two removable uh, links that uh, can make it any size you want for the different size of the wearers. It is composed of three components, links, clasp, and a cap. The cap obviously being the most important part because that's what people really will see. All the parts are going to be made in China and the caps will be finished in the United States to keep us close to our uh, market. So who is interested in something like this? Obviously, this girl is a perfect candidate, but um, it's really somebody between her and the people that are wearing Pandora bracelets based on the pricing. So we did a bunch of product surveys, about a little over 100, so we still have a lot more to go. And what we came up with is that there's a very clear market. If you take girls ages 5 to 15, right about that center spot there, about 9 to 11, is the um, peak area there. Before 9, they kind of don't get it. After 11, it's just not cool. So that's your, that's your area. And then why do they want it? The why is because it allows them to express themselves, it allows them to be creative, it's a unique something that they have that nobody else has. So let's take Jane for example. Jane here, uh, she loves Brad. Jane also has a cat that she likes and a new puppy. Jane just took a trip to Europe and Jane is a soccer fanatic. So this would be something that Jane would put together. Obviously everything's interchangeable so when Brad's a jerk, Jimmy's in, it's no problem. <laughs> if she wants to actually uh, expand a little bit more on her bracelet, the shape allows you to stack these endlessly. So as far as you've got an arm, you can stack these and then Jane can go ahead and express herself in any way she wants. She also, since they're magnetic, can flip them around and change them as however she like. So that, that is uh, Jane's bracelet. So let's talk about how we get this to Jane. Well, you know obviously nine to 11 year old girls have a ton of access to the internet, to apps, to everything like that. So we just kind of go through those modalities. We hit them on the app, we hit them on the internet. The Jane's uh, app would look like this. You essentially have the ability to create your own hexes, any kinds that you want. You can share them. So if you want to share your, your face kind of like on a Facebook page or something like that so somebody else can make your hex, no problem. She can design her own bracelets and then she can um, go ahead and purchase them right there on the app or on the internet. So how do we get them to them? We can go through the app is one way to get to the people. The other way we can go through is um, through retail establishments. So we can just let the hexes flow here. And the idea is that um, the bracelets maybe they pick up in the retail establishments and then the custom hexes they get through the app. And then probably uh, generic hexes, so things with just kind of color codes, maybe just red or blue or something like that um, with pictures can come through the retailers as well. This would be a retail package. Uh, they'll come with six hexes. Those would again be the generic ones. Unless you order them on the website, you can get your own <laughs> customized ones. We imagine that the bracelets will cost around $20 to $30. That's to be determined. That's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, they are quality stainless steel and they're, they're all solid metal, so this isn't like a cheap thing, but also it's not a Pandora bracelet. Uh, the hexes, you can buy them in groups of six or 12. Uh, any, really, you could buy one if you wanted to. It's probably not uh, the best idea, but they are about $3 each, and uh, you probably run some specials like buy three, get one free. Uh, since you have 12 on the bracelet, that works out really nicely, so you can get a whole bracelet for um, you know, a certain amount of money, depending on which you want to go in the retail establishments there. And then, so when are we going to do all this, or what's the timeline on this? That's a, a big chart, obviously. It just shows you where we're kind of at. We're really early in the stage. This would be a 2016 timeline. Um, what, are we ha what are we doing here? So we have our seed funding, uh, which is just self-funded at this point. The patent application is an opinion. They told us everything's great. Uh, we own the, all the IP for both the names of Hexlets and Pixlets. The technical drawings are done. We have seven Chinese manufacturers, all on break for Chinese New Year, uh, bidding on these things. And then we have uh, three Indian programmers that are actually um, working on the development and are 
are bidding that for us as well. So last thing is obviously help. So what am I even doing here today? That is what we're asking for. So the help we are doing is we're looking for feedback. We've talked to tons of girls and they love it, but they don't tell you anything, but they love it. So we're looking for people to say this is stupid. And then uh, we need help validating the concept. So we're looking for people to help us get to the target market and get more information from them. We'd like to establish an advisory board. So anybody in here with retail experience, et cetera, would be great. And we're unsure of the go-to-market strategy. How do we want to actually take this thing to market? And uh, with that, I'll tell you a quick second about myself. I am a Fortune 500 IT exec, and this is about 1,000 yards away from that. I've done three companies in the past, sold all three of them uh, successfully, but they have not been big. They've only been half a million dollar revenue, plus or minus. So that is the team at this point. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, great job. Um, you know, I, 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 this highlights a really important thing for, so, you know, everybody comes up and says I'm doing an investor pitch. Isn't it just m much more interesting when you say I'm not doing an investor pitch, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and by the way, I highly recommend that if you're ever kind of do, doing your pitch. Uh, you know, asking for advice is, is probably a lot better path to actually getting investors than actually asking them for money. So, uh, very well done on that, uh, on that front. Um, uh, I, 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 you, so you're looking for validation of the, the, you know, so one of my big questions then is, okay, um, you know, a part of your model, right, you're gonna do the direct, um, I've got two daughters, they aged out of your, of your target audience, unfortunately, <laughs> but I do remember when they had, you know, oh, yeah. they looked like your picture, right, with the, the bracelets. <laughs> um, so the direct uh, is an interesting way to go, both with the app and with the, the, the website. But on the retailer side, have you had any retailer conversations? We have not yet. We, we have a couple friends that are in retail that are, are purchasing execs. And they essentially gave us an understanding of how we would go about that. Mm -hmm. The companies in the past, we've actually had some that are retail and direct. And um, so we have an understanding of how it goes. The, the problem that we have there is that we want to understand the model first. So do we give the retailers exclusive rights to sell the bracelets so that they don't um, think that we're undercutting them online, which is a problem we had a company in the past? And, um, or do we just you know, boil the ocean? We just sell them all if they want it online or they want it um, in the store. But the idea is if you do a generic set, so a lot of the feedback was, I just want a bracelet with a lot of pretty colors that I can mix and match and trade with my friends. Um, so that's great for a retail establishment because then we just make a bunch of generic th things that have photos on them that are in a color genre and then um, they can sell them. So yeah. that's, that's part of the go-to-market strategy we're asking about is how do we do it. And also, also the cost of going direct to retail is, is high, yeah. right? We probably end up spending 200000 on the first prototypes just to get them to there. Yeah, so um, two points. The first is more product specific, you just hit on it. The tradability factor, like I don't have two yeah. daughters, um, I have two boys that are right near Target and they probably think this is awful and they would never, never the use it. The boys think it's awful. Of course, but, but yeah. what was really interesting to me is that the customization personalization element seems to hit a lot of on trend, if not like almost perpetual trend in that, in that market. The tradability factor, the sociability of like swapping out a pixlet between friends. Yep. I thought you were going to go there, so I don't know. It'd be cool to see if you could actually get more research on yeah. that or work that in. That's it's just... it's hard in the timing, obviously, that yeah. you got to discuss that. But one of the things that when we talk to people, the boys actually want to. This is kind of silly, but they want to make their own hexes and give them to the girls. Sure, is what that that was their feedback to us. Is I don't I'm not going to wear one of those things, but I sure wanted to wear my picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'd be cool to see more research on that. But yeah. Anyway, so like just that was just more of uh, a side a side comment. But um, uh, as it relates to the presentation, the only thing I, I would coach you on is um, when you drop the patent word, right? Yep. It, it like rings a bell in my head. So I've I've been involved both as an executive in startups where we were seeking patent approval mm -hmm. and also as an investor, and it's it's a very charged word, right? Yeah. It means high legal bills. And it also kind of opens you up to scrutiny as to what are you really patenting. So, yep. so my next, you it's know, only thing would be fifteen grand. Right, <laughs> right. Well, to start. Um, right. And, and then it gets more expensive. Yes, it's six figures every year minimum. Yes. So, so be careful when you use that word. I, I don't have a problem with the word. I just want to know now, like, okay, you got me on the concept. It was a cool. Cool. You're not asking for money, um, but when you don't ask for money and you drop the patent word, I'm like, okay, you know, hundred, hundred, two hundred k on patents. Yes. So, so what is the patent? 
the, the, the patent was mainly the opinion to make sure that we're not infringing on other patents. Okay, so you have a patent That's why it's a process. Process. That's it. it. We want to make sure that we don't go into this thing, make a million bucks, and then somebody comes and sues our pants off. Yeah. And that was the opinion. The opinion came back pretty clear. The, obviously, the patent attorneys are like, yes, go ahead and patent. So we may do that. You know, okay. it just depends. But um, the main thing was there is, there's no product out there that's exactly like this, but there are definitely products out there that use mag magnetism to hold on metal things that have stuff on them. Sure. And that's where we kind of got a little worried about the patent. And they said, no, it's no problem. Because they're, they're patenting it from like kind of start to finish with that's all cool. the. Yeah, just be wary when you use that word. Especially yeah. if you're talking to retailers or kind of merchandise type execs yeah. that would be interested in this. But the same thing, we did be want clear. a little bit of IP protection in yeah, case totally. somebody comes yeah, behind be us really and clear. says, yeah. I'll make them round and I can do it better. That's cool. Just yeah. be clear on what you're doing because okay. I just wasn't totally clear on it. And like, I've said that a few times today. <coughs> when I don't have enough clarity, like I start to say, okay, is this worth the next meeting or is this worth the further push? But Absolutely. I thought it was great. Very cool idea. Thank you. So, awesome. Well, uh, I... Your product market, I've got three girls, 7, 11, and 15. Uh -huh. So your timeline, I, love you. I, I, I can see that world, right? Um, I, thought, uh, I thought your presentation was, uh, was great. I thought, you know, established clear market, clear product, uh, a good story, um, you know, even lending to, you know, experience, good, good images, uh, and then also clear access and distribution. I think, you know, you did it, it very quickly. We're able to give us a, a scope of that. Um, and, your, your hanging, right, is, is go-to-market strategy and, yep. and market potential. Yep. Um, one of the things that you didn't touch on is the market potential. I mean, mm -hmm. we can all, let's, trust me, as three girls, I understand market potential. Um, but, you know, that would be my question for you is just mm -hmm. kind of what is the market potential here? Uh, what, do, what are you seeing on that side? Yeah, and, and that was part of the survey. So the 100 surveys we did or so, they all, it's hard to get good data out of tweens. And it's extremely hard to get access to them, right? Because it's if you're going after that age group, especially female, that you, you get a lot of weird pushback. Like, you're not talking to my girl. Go away. So we had to we really had to go kind of friends and family route of like so you would be somebody who I could say, hey, I'd love to survey your three daughters. Um, then we get the feedback from that. The the feedback we've gotten is that there's a ton of market for them to collect the the actual hexes. So we we designed it so that they could stack, so that you could have a bunch of them. But they, the girls that we talked to, they said, no, I want to collect a bunch. I want to, I want to have this big box of these things, and then today I pick out which three I want to wear. Um, so the marketability question, I have to get more survey data so that I can really say, well, how many of these would you collect? Is it 50? Is it 100? Is it 10? And then that'll give me an idea of the market. From a market standpoint of the girls that we think are target, we said it's 8 to 12, with 9 to 11 being the, the sweet spot there. Um, that's easy data. I can pull that from the census pretty easily. The question is, what is their income levels, and how does that affect? Uh, obviously, a three-dollar little charm is not expensive, probably to most people in this room, but that can be very expensive to other people. So we have to we have to see what the true market is. So I don't have that data yet. Mining that is not too difficult, though. Um, probably a what a ten thousand dollar market study would pull that pretty quickly. So that's the stage we're at. We're at really at a go, no go state. I, you guys probably saw that slide I flew by, but it had the decision points on it. And we're at a decision point. Like I'm ready to throw money into this thing, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, let's just let's socialize it first. So on the on the market side, so I build a product targeting tweens. There, there are uh, I think it was twelve the 2012 census data. There's about 18 million and a half households in the Great. U.S. with at least one tween. Uh, that's not boy girl that uh, also have smartphone broadband access and greater than 55,000 in AGI. So awesome. it's not a massive market, but it's, yeah, it's probably a 20 it's million enough. addressable household market. Yeah. And I don't know if half, if half have girls, then there's your kind of nine. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about that market is that's uh, with one tween, right? So you also have at least one below or one above. Yeah. So you've got a customer coming up. Um, in yeah, here's your bracelets. Go buy more. Third of those cases. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So just anyway, that's... There's some data for you. Yeah, and, I, and I'll, I'll go back to your, you know, the go-to-market strategy, yep. right? So you got, you know, as I see it, you, you want to have, you, you want to be able to prove that there's a market, right? You can't go, you know, Claire's, I think, is clearly your ultimate, yeah. your, your ultimate retailer, Claire's, right? Claire's, Justice, retailer, right? Delia's. Because they're, they're, yep. they're everywhere, and I, I, you know, years ago, I spent a lot of time there um, <laughs> and spent a lot of money there. Um, but I, I love to hear all this, by right. the way. Right. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's true. Um, but... Uh, 
you know, I, that's not where you start, right? And the question, um, and I've got more, yeah, you know, so I do think it's that direct approach and then how do you get there, right? How do you, and, and is it through, you know, it's very hard to get to that market directly. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, is it through grandparents? Is it, I, 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 and I think that's the, the biggest question that you have to answer is, how do you how do you initially prove out that there indeed is a market, and how do you get you know how do you acquire those initial customers for that test, yep. right? Well, and before the survey, we really thought that the market was the girls actually socially kind of sharing it themselves. But right. the funny thing is, once you hit that thirteen, they actually gave us the feedback that this is getting a little creepy now. Yeah. Wearing our friends on our bracelets, the girls under thirteen were like, we love it. So there's really a question there: Is it really about the heads? Like, is it about them putting themselves on it or their friends on it, or is it just about the pictures? And it seemed to, what we really found out is it seems that they just want the pictures. They want these interchangeable, they just want to collect stuff and be able to put it on there and it's pretty. Um, so it, it really wasn't about that content of the, of the people. So that's, it's a really good question. How do we get to there and how do we penetrate that market? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So I'm out of time, yeah. Okay, thank you.